Hello, and welcome to the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. Each episode, we talk about a particular topic in the life of a professor. We are tenure-track faculty members in the sciences, working at a primarily undergraduate university in California. The purpose of our podcast is reflection, so we bring something we think is working and something we're working on to discuss. Welcome to the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. I'm Claire. And I'm Ruth. And today, uh, the title of our episode is Got Tenure, because we have breaking news to share. But before we do that, Claire, how was your week? My week was great. Um, Ralph and I went to Santa Cruz and Napa, so we did like a fun outing, leaving the county, doing things. So we we got to travel, we got to see family, I got to do some research because it was, you know, using the analytical equipment at Santa Cruz. So it was nice to go, nice to see people, nice to come home. It was just all awesome and um, just fun reminders that travel is fun. Awesome. And did it feel like a real um, stopper on the semester? Like you could go somewhere and Mm -hmm. that's super cool. Yeah. Yeah. it. It was totally different things we were working on at that point. So that was really nice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I kind of, I'm still like, I don't feel totally liberated yet because the kids are still doing school. Oh, sure. But that's coming soon. But I, I mean, obviously huge. My life just got so much less complicated by me not teaching, but it's mm-hmm. still the full liberation is not quite here yet. <laughs> but um, Well, that's exciting that it's coming up. Yeah. Are what we, about you? How was your week? Yeah. It, um, so my daughter is losing her two front teeth oh, at the moment. That's and exciting. Yeah, but dude, I forgot how strange it can get when this like really just hanging in there by a thread. Mm. And it's like, I remember hearing someone else say this before and I was like, really, is it really gross? And then when it's like, oh my God, it's like so stomach churning. Really? When it's just hanging. Yeah, I just had no, because she got up one morning and it's like, the one was like twice as long as the other because it's like right and I was like what is happening and it's just like she kept smiling and it was like peeping out like snaggle tooth and anyway it's but the one thing I feel really bad about is she said she's like is it gonna bleed and I was like no and then there was so much blood like really I have no recollection of this being a thing when I was a kid and even with my eldest daughter but for some reason it was like totally just it was so much blood so I was like she was like you said this wouldn't happen I was like I know I know I thought I didn't think it was going to so oh, man. yeah there you go that's shocking breaking news I remember Child. that being a thing like are you gonna pull the tooth out once yeah. it's loose or are you gonna wait till it like the last thread comes off of its own accord I well, was we of the weight phenomenon, I was of the weight too mm-hmm. but um hers on Friday night like it was literally like oh my she's not going to be able to eat with mm. this situation and then luckily it came out but I was like do I need to you know I don't want to be that person with the pliers or something but I was like do I need to give it like a nudge but it took care of itself so that was good good, good. yeah but who knew I hope that's not going to be the case with all of her teeth for sure because that would be distressing hmm. but well if so at least you'll all be used to it by the second one, I know hopefully. we'll be like oh don't mind the rivers of blood it's just it's just <laughs> what I do so yeah So So do you have a quote for us today? I do. And I'm going to go back to, um, because we've just come through this odyssey that we've gone through. So I'm going to come back to an odyssey too of Gandalf and Lord of the Rings. And I think this one, so it's all we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. And it it sort of really makes me think of you and a lot of like the Greg McCohen type of stuff Mm. and being conscious. And then also, I guess for me, you know, how do we, so much of my driving force, I mean, obviously, like, caring about students and all of those things is my primary driving force. But a lot of my driving force since I came to this job has been about this tenure situation. Mm. And then thinking more about how to decide what you're going to do for different motivations is sort totally. of interesting. Totally. So, yeah, I'm into it. So uh, what do we want to tell everyone? We both got tenure. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Yeah. Very exciting. That's it. That's the end of the episode. That's that's the story. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So we wanted to take this episode to talk about things that worked for us and things that um, maybe we would have done differently or things we're working on um, as we reflect back on this process. And we were just talking about, um, before we started the episode, how many 
things like looking back, we could see that this felt like a gigantic mountain. We had planned out, you know, on our list of potential episodes, we said getting 10 year parts to through infinity. It seemed like an mm-hmm. infinitely long process of getting 10 years. So it's kind of wild to actually have it be in the rear view mirror at this point. Super wild. And I think like we talked about just before this too, like sometimes it doesn't even, it, it takes a minute for it to sink in. Mm-hmm. Like it's sort of like, it's almost like I'm going to use the analogy of a tooth, like poking it, like you kind of revisit it over and over again. You're mm-hmm. like, Oh yeah, that thing happened. Totally. Week, so totally. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what, what's working or what worked for you with the getting tenure? Process? So one thing I realized is, um, I think I told you this before that I got a scholarship to do my PhD mm-hmm. and I was so excited about it and I like put the letter on the fridge mm-hmm. and then like almost didn't accept it because I just hmm. forgot about that stage. So I was like, yeah, it's on the fridge. And then someone else was looking at it and they were like, it says the acceptance date is tomorrow. Like, have you done that? And I was like, oh my God, like I forgot about that bit. I just thought <laughs> like it was, and I realized I haven't signed the letter that we got. So I should do that and send it back. You should do that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you can check in with me and make sure. But That's funny. It, it's so weird. So, you know, all the people beforehand when we were like talking about the minutiae of like, how does this thing work and that thing? And then everyone's like, just put your stuff together and put it in and you're going to get tenure and it's mm-hmm. fine. And you're like, you don't understand. Like, that is not, it's so much more you're complicated. You're like, does this go that. on this line or that line? And exactly. Yeah. <laughs> totally. I know. And like, it reminds me of having a baby because. Before I gave birth, I was like interviewing everyone about like, but like what time did this happen? And at what minute did this happen? And what Mm -hmm. did this exactly feel like? And what things like, can you give me like a description of everything you had in your bag? And how many things does the baby need? And it's just so intense and detailed. Mm -hmm. And then after I had a baby, you're like, yeah, I had this baby and I I was in labor and this happened. And then it just becomes that thing afterwards Mm -hmm. where you're like, suddenly all of that goes out of it. And that's how I feel about this, where like now I feel like if I met someone and they were like, I'm doing my tenure file, I'd be like, just get your stuff together and put it in and it'd be fine. (laughs) And it's just so weird to transition from such intense detail focus, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's kind of weird because it's been a year since we put it in. Sure. You know, and so it's definitely, I found the year since we put it in, I didn't actually find that stressful. Mm-hmm, do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because it was it like was... we didn't have anything to do. Right. And I would definitely get a surge of like, oh, like when I was opening each letter along the way. But it wasn't super stressful. Like, oh, I have to do 10 things by tomorrow. Totally. Do you know what I mean? So just in case anyone's tenure process is different. Oh, good. At yes. other universities. Ours was you. Well, we had retention files that we put in that had like everything we'd done in teaching, research and service for the past two years. We did that every other year and then um the year we went up for tenure which for us was the beginning of our fifth year because we both did it a year early and that's i don't know that's the timeline at our university it was another big file that everything you've done you know since starting this job teaching research and service and then it took a whole well almost a whole year of people evaluating that going up the different levels of chair and then dean and then provost and president um so yeah it was a long time ago that we finished that right And I I didn't think, um, I didn't realize how meaningful it would be to get those letters Mm -hmm. and how much work those committees do. Because they really, like, and I think they do it in previous iterations, but it seems like they go all out for the tenure one. Totally. And it was so, it felt really, I don't know, because they like quote the letters you got or they're Mm -hmm. like, this person specifically did this thing. And it just, you feel very seen in Mm -hmm. the process and so I think in my more cynical moments I've sort of viewed this as purely a hoop jumping exercise you know that you have to kind of perform these Mm -hmm. tasks and I didn't kind of think of that sort of aspect of it that it's it's quite nice too I mean Mm -hmm. not the bit where you're doing all the stuff getting it together but the reading about you know it's nice to be acknowledged for what you did and it's nice to share and hear back about what you've done and you know now more people know what we're working on and maybe that'll I don't know lead to some conversations in the future that could be really interesting maybe we'll get some more listeners for our yeah podcast, exactly we yeah. well <laughs> I think this was in our tenure file guys. yeah totally um <laughs> and I think too like because you know you kind of have your colleagues and you're like sure like we're we're friends and we know uh-huh. each other and so obviously they're gonna say 
nice things, but it was kind of cool to have people who you haven't really met before. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that felt kind of like, oh, okay, maybe this is actually a good thing that I did instead of just, you know, people like you and are trying to be nice. <laughs> so, yeah. So I think I am definitely have like more structured advice that I think we've talked a little bit about before Mm -hmm. like having a spreadsheet maybe to keep track of hours Mm -hmm. is something I found really helpful because that was something I would have struggled to go back and evaluate and I think both you and I suffered from the issue of underestimating things sure you don't want to overestimate or underestimate how many hours you spend on something and so it feels better to round down (laughs) right and I think I would have rounded way more down except I had this spreadsheet where it was like oh no I did do seven meetings that all took an hour so that Mm -hmm. is you know so that was helpful I think and I think um I don't know if you did this but I did the whole file had so many parts I put it into three separate documents and that was helpful to me to kind of do that so yeah so what about you what was working for you or what has worked for you Totally. So um, I think I mentioned this before, but I want to bring it up again. In my file, I explicitly matched up. I got all the department and university criteria for each different, you know, teaching, research and service. And I explicitly made a table where I was like, and here is the things that I've done that met those particular criteria. And, and, you know, our department and university have really specific criteria. So I could do that. But that just actually seeing it all lined up there, you know, I put it all up there for the benefit of the reviewers thinking that this would just make their life really easy um, to see that I had met the criteria and they could just check it off, of course. But it also made me feel much more relaxed about the whole process because as soon as I made that table, I was like, oh, I did meet the criteria. Right, it's like a metric. Yeah, so that was nice. So I would recommend that to anyone in a similar situation. The other thing that really worked for me was talking with um, faculty in the department about whether they thought it was a good idea for me to go up for early tenure and what other things I needed. Like there was kind of a discussion in the department about, do you need to teach more lower division classes before you go up for tenure or how does, and just to make sure that, um, you know, it, it helped make sure that any concerns that anybody had were addressed before the file went in, you know, like we could have decided whether that was an issue or not before they were writing a letter about it. And so that was kind of nice. Oh, I think um, that's it's such a like yeah, good point to have yeah. aired all of those things. Totally. You don't, you don't want to be figuring that out through the tenure mm-hmm, process. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And it was also just really helpful to have everyone's insights. So just having discussions with other people who are familiar with the review process and know you, I found really helpful. Yeah. And e- what you said too about the um, the table... Like how mm-hmm. you met the criteria. I think I think I mentioned this on here before, but we were reviewing our tenure requirements and someone had just gone through someone else's file and they had that and it was so helpful to them. It's kind of prompted us to have more uh-huh. tangible checklist type things in our tenure stuff. So I think that's excellent. Cool. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, so that's it. Yeah. And I think I would, you know, Reflecting back, it does seem like I agree with what you were saying about, oh, just put your stuff in there and don't don't worry about the minutia. Because, um, yeah, it turns out nobody cares about whether this is on that line or that line, as long as they can see it all really easily and it's generally following the, you know, system. So, do you know, okay, here's a question for you. Do you know, you hear these horror stories about... Oh, like someone didn't get tenure because they didn't have the file names right uh-huh. or like whatever it is. And do you think that's just like, do you think if you are going along fine, people will forgive small things hmm. or it, like, you know what I mean? Because it's just, it, it seems, I'm sure my stuff wasn't perfect. Totally, totally. Do you know what I mean? So I wonder. Well, the context that I've heard that in mostly is like, as you're doing the review cycles before you put in the tenure file, if your file names are not correct and it's really annoying for the reviewers because they have to figure things out, they'll tell you then and then you yeah. do it right for the tenure file. So I think the way I've heard about those kind of things has always been so that you don't have that problem on the tenure yeah. file. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I don't know. I'm I sure think one other thing that worked for me, mm-hmm. um, and I think I've talked about this before too, is like knowing enough about myself to know I don't function very well at the last minute Mm -hmm. so like uploading things 
as I went along and mm-hmm. like doing the naming convention and like I get less detail oriented the closer I get to a deadline. So it was really helpful for me to do that well totally. in advance. So that was super helpful. Do the detail oriented things while there's plenty of time. Yeah. And those are also really great things to do. You know, sometimes it doesn't feel like the time to write your teaching philosophy, but you could, you know, make sure all the classes are written in the right orders or something, you know? Oh, so totally. Yeah. It's perfect to yeah. do that when those times present themselves. Totally. So, um, so then working on, working on, looking forward. Yeah. Yeah. What are you, what are you working on? I think, you know, just that, like kind of the Gandalf quote a little bit and maybe thinking about, um, you know, yeah, like the whole having the tenure thing hanging over you for the first five years Mm -hmm. was like, sometimes a pain and then other times it's been a really good driving motivator for me Mm -hmm, like you know mm -hmm, that whole thing about like try and do one thing a year that like adds to your tenure file one thing a semester that you know that sort of thing and so I think that's something I want to work on is sort of thinking about um like what will be what will be the things I want to kind of focus on and what were the things that I would like to be writing up as I apply for full professor? Like mm-hmm. what would the things be that I would like to have in there and like cool. what directions do I want to go? So I think that, and then I guess the other thing I'm working on or thinking about is how to be helpful to other people. Cause part Ooh, of me now just it. wants to be like, just chill out, just, just put don't worry about together. It. <laughs> like, but like, but we how, know that that wasn't satisfying. <laughs> right. Like how do you help people who are like in the specific freak out that we were in which is maybe it's kind of interesting that we have it like we kind of had this time capsule right of like Mm -hmm. because even if we wanted to be delusional and be like you know I don't think we were that stressed about it we can go back and listen to our old episodes and be like yeah (laughs) or or look at some of my old texts to you like what file names like how does it go like whatever it was does this go in section four or section five (laughs) right totally and so like yeah, just kind of holding on to that a little bit so that it can be helpful uh-huh. for other people. And like, I have a couple of people I need to write letters for. Mm-hmm. And it would have been my heart's greatest wish to get letters <laughs> like two months early. Do you know what I mean? And so yes. I'm like, I'm going to do that. But then I haven't done it. So I want to like, mm-hmm. do. I would love to be someone making someone else's tenure file experience easier. I love that. I love that. And I did really appreciate, you know, s- you always get a flurry of people coming to your classes in the last little bit of time yeah. that there is before writing the letters. Um, and I really appreciated the odd person who would come in an unusual semester or something like that. So I, right. I that's a really good point to, to try to be that person. Um, and uh, yeah, how can we help with the details? Well, also, I do think it's an important message, the one that we were receiving from everybody yes. of don't worry too much about the detail you know try to get the details right but don't obsess about it being right because I mean maybe maybe if we hadn't been getting that message we would have been even more right you know and and someone was super helpful with me and she was like look once you hand it in you're going to kind of not care because it's out of your hands and I was like I will care I'm going to be so stressed for the whole year and then she was totally right I was (laughs) like oh okay like just watching this boat drift down the river Mm -hmm. it's like okay good luck to your file but like I can't do anything so that was really helpful Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. yeah I think it's that thing like it's any part of I'm using this phrase and it's not quite what I mean but it's any part of growing up where it's super helpful to have people on the other side but Mm -hmm. not for those people to totally discount Mm. your experience you know what I mean it'd be like oh being a teenager or whatever like it's just like (laughs) you need some yeah so I kind of want to remember it enough to be useful that makes sense I like that I like that so what about you what are you working on well my first thought when I was like okay got the official letter like who do I tell what do I do one of my early thoughts was I want to change my title on my email signature to associate oh, professor totally. and then I was like can I do that now though because oh it goes my into goodness Claire. in August that's what I was thinking too because really? I wanted to get like I don't do anything on LinkedIn but I was like check me out going over to LinkedIn and then I was like am I lying right I was like I guess I have to wait till August 17th and then I was like but who really cares is anyone surely it's okay so anyway um I don't haven't quite resolved we... that question but I've kind of been like Sure. Uh, well, uh, surely it's fine. 
<laughs> Dude, I feel like the real definition of imposter syndrome is you constantly think like there's some legal entity who's going to storm in and be like, <laughs> Claire, like you're under arrest for like falsifying, pretending to be an associate professor. When you clearly <laughs> really, are. You're going to be in two months. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so I think I'm going to do that, uh, but I haven't yet. Okay, I might um, do it too then. Yeah. Only because then if I get caught, I'll be like, who did it first? So, yeah. (laughs) Okay, wait till I do it. And then you. (laughs) Um, I think we can do it. I'm also interested, kind of what you were saying. I really don't know where are the criteria for review cycles for tenured faculty. I know that tenured faculty do reviews periodically. No idea, like, what they look like. You need to find that information. (laughs) I love this because I'm like, oh, these are some minutiae details I could get obsessed about. (laughs) Like going forward, but that's true. I'm just like, oh my god, I have no idea. No, Is like, it in how, five when years? do you go up for full professor? I don't know. Oh with, yeah. With, so these are things that I don't know. There's no rush. We don't need to jump on it, but it, you know, we should find that out at some point. I'm sure we have access to the information. I just don't know where it is. That's really interesting because it hasn't been relevant before. So why would right, we know? You know so, yeah. yeah, we yeah exactly. Yeah. And then the last thing is just like. You know, the point of tenure, at least as I always think of it, is that now we can do things in teaching and research and I suppose service um, without worrying that someone's going to say, oh, I don't know if that's going to work or that's a bad idea or something like that. So I'm kind of wondering if there's anything crazy that I want to do (laughs) that um, I I didn't realize I wasn't doing because people would have raised their eyebrows or something. You know, like, is there some cool teaching pedagogy thing I want to try or... Uh, I don't know, some new research direction I want to, you know, so I'm just kind of like open to that concept of um, remembering that. I love that. I kind of imagine it almost like just this space you can stretch into Mm -hmm. without, you know, and like, I don't think either of us had the experience here of someone like standing over you with the stick, like, like, what are you doing? Or like, you know, so we didn't have that, but there was right. always this, like, even I read the dreaded evals, Oh, you know, for last <laughs> semester. Too. And it was sort of like, I was like, oh, like, you know, none of them were terrible, but it was like, I don't have to like explain this mm-hmm. in like great detail. Like, you know, even if there had been a bad one, I wouldn't have to like justify it super quickly mm-hmm. or there's like a longer curing period for all of this stuff like Mm -hmm. what will you do over the next few years rather than like what did you do last semester right right because it's always I mean of course you always want every class to work but we're always experimenting and trying to improve the classes and um, I just feel like there's a little more leeway for to trying something exciting that has a great potential but could flop because yeah those that one semester evals is not going to trash our tenure file because that's already too done. late yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like imagining you being like I'm gonna try like reading a magazine at the front and just letting you guys do your own thing and we'll just see how that goes just an experiment you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's in the name of science oh man yeah. but I, I do I think and I think that's the thing that's going to take some revisiting mm-hmm. like oh oh yeah this isn't like I don't think that's going to come to us in a flash totally totally and all that said I have felt very free to choose my own yeah. research directions and choose how I handle the class. And I, I don't really feel like there have been restrictions or, or somebody standing over us or anything like that. But um, just remembering that it's even less so now if there's yeah. some things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that. Wow. So here we are. Here we are. So not quite yet, but um, soon you can refer to us as associate professors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's awesome. I am... Um, yeah. Yeah. It's a weird, it's a weird thing. I think it's going to take some getting used to. Mm-hmm. And like, I think I said to you too, like my primary, the urgent awesomeness of it is like, oh, I don't have to do a tenure file this summer. So that, <laughs> well, was, that is the most tangible aspect. Right. right now. And because I think, you know, I don't think, God, I sound like, I'm like trying to not sound like an egomaniac, but I don't think there was ever a case where we were like going to get the you're never getting tenure, get out of here. Mm-hmm. But like, it was reasonably wouldn't it have been crazy for them to be like, okay, just revisit these things I and see, then we'll yeah. go through it Resubmit, again. And so, sure. right, which doesn't seem like that much, but this summer it would feel like a lot to do. Mm-hmm. It that. would have been so, a bummer. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. I'm glad not to do it. So, <laughs> yeah. So, hooray. Congratulations, Claire. Congratulations, Ruth. Thanks so much for joining us on the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. 
We're delighted to have you as a listener and we would love to hear from you. And if you want to email us, our address is contactprofessorpodcast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear any of your suggestions for future shows or professor quotes that you might want to share with us, or even just things that have come up for you when you were listening to previous episodes. And if you've been enjoying the podcast, we would love if you would spread the word. So the best way to spread word is by telling people you know if you think they should listen to it, or you can leave us a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.